Okay, we've had a lot of fun picking these American padlocks. Uh, they're quite a challenge, I think you all realize that. But uh, knowledge is power, that's the old saying. And I like to look at how criminals are attacking our locks. And looking at how they attack it, that's, it helps us figure out ways to defeat them. So one of the ways that they beat these locks is they use what's called a bypass tool. Now there's a lot of videos out there, I'd like, uh, on YouTube, uh, I'd like to dispel some of the rumors that are involved in how to make these bypasses out of different materials. But before we start talking about bypasses, let's talk about how they work. Now, let's look at the internal mechanism. This is a normal uh, American lock, locking mechanism. It come, it's two independent mechanical parts. It's the lock itself, which contains, as we know, these fun to pick uh, spool pins and serrated pins, and this is a fun part. But the unlock is fun too, and the way that it works is once we've defeated the first mechanism, it then will turn, it engages on the back with these little cams, and it will rotate the cam, which is spring-loaded, that's that tension we have to overcome, and these indentations that you see will align with the ball bearings, which allows our hasp to then open. Well, a real smart guy looked at these from Peterson International, and he figured out that they are independent, and if I can just ignore this one, if I just need to activate that one and turn it, I can open all American padlocks. And so that's exactly what Peterson International did. They invented a bypass tool, and it looks like this. A um, couple of critical things about this tool. Uh, I hear on, I've seen on the internet where uh, you can make these out of coat hangers, and I can tell you this is not coat hanger wire. Coat hanger wire, I've tried it, it's way too thick to go into the keyway. The second thing that's absolutely critical is this angle of the flag. If it's too vertical, it won't engage the cam, it won't escape from the uh, core, and if it's too much of an angle like this, it will not escape the core so that it can rotate. Half of the angle will be in the core, and half will be on the cam, and it will not rotate, so it won't work. has to be perfect. The other thing that is absolutely critical is on the very end of it, you'll notice that it has a small little, it's like a little arc here, a little bend in it, and that's because we have to go into the keyway, we have to use the full height of the keyway and the full width. And this one doesn't have pins in it, by the way, but you see it has to fit around that little piece of warding right there to go all the way through. And so that here's how it will work. When the locking mechanism is in place, come on baby, focus, there you go. It's all lined up like this. The Peterson tool simply fits into the keyway. You jiggle it a little bit and it'll fit up against the cam. And then when you turn it, the cam will act, oops, the cam will, ah, clumsy. The cam will activate. It's hard to do this on camera, believe me. And it will turn it. <laughs> you get the idea, it will rotate. Hard to do balancing around the camera here. But that's how they work. Well, of course, when Peterson International released that tool, these guys were really pissed because suddenly criminals were making or buying these tools somewhere on the internet and they were actually targeting. These became so easy to open with this tool that they were looking for these and previously these were really secure, very reliable locks. So in the field this is how it will work. You find an old lock like this and he's been in the weather for quite a while and by the way if you don't know how to decipher dates if you look on the back of these locks there's a three letter code U-E-H. And you've got a little lookup table, and you just look up, here's the month, so U would be June, and then E would be O, and then H, of course, is 7. So June of 07 is the birth date of this old guy. So anyway, in the field, we find an old lock like this, made before uh, any defeat mechanisms for this device were invented, and you just slide it in, jiggle it, and bam, open. Too easy. That, it's easier than a key, and that's why criminals were targeting these. Well, American Padlock said, holy crap, let's get our engineers together. We need to figure out something here. And so they said, well, if we re-engineer our entire production line and we redesign these, come on, baby, if we redesign these cams, that means we're going to have millions of existing locks that now have require a different cam. It's going to cost us millions and millions of dollars. Same way with the core. If we go in and we somehow redesign this core, we got to do we got to do a recall. We got to fix everybody's locks, and we're going to get a bad reputation because that's unaffordable. Well, a real smart engineer came up with the idea of a putting a wafer to isolate 
these two mechanical devices. Now this is nothing but a stainless steel, very thin wafer, it's ten thousandths of an inch thick. And you can see it has the same shape as the back of the core, and it fits on there just like that. So when that's in place, let me get the other part of our mechanism up here. When all this is together, when we try to slide our Peterson tool through there, he goes almost there, but then that wafer blocks him out. He can't quite get into that groove. So that's what they did. After a certain period, all American locks started coming with these wafers. Well, here's a new American lock. You can see it's 100 year. This one, if you look at the code, it was made June of 2012, so this year. Brand new lock. We try to take our our bypass tool. We're going to stick him in there and of course he gets in there and he reaches a certain point and it won't work. That's because that wafer is blocking him out. Well of course Peterson wants to continue to sell these things as do other manufacturers because I think this thing is out of patent now. So he came up with another device and he calls it the wafer breaker. And it looks like this. It's a wafer breaker kit and again, I see on YouTube where people are making these out of windshield wiper inserts and claiming that they work. They don't ever, ever actually demonstrate it, but they show you what appears to be a tool. And it looks like it, but it doesn't quite work. And that's because these are, again, made out of very tough stainless steel. And these truly are, these are harder than woodpecker lips. I mean, these are, this is really tough steel. Let's start with the first one. And so what we're going to do, you see it, again, focus. It's a very small uh, hole puncher that we're going to take and drive through. I don't know if I can get this, pick the pin up. Put it on there. So we're going to take our puncher our, and we're going to put it, oh God, I hate this, with a point up, slide it in, and we're going to hit it with something. And you see it has a limiter, so it won't go too deep to damage the lock and it's going to punch a hole through the top. Then we're going to pull it out a little bit. We're going to try to turn it like a key to the right as much as we can, and we're going to hit it again to slightly enlarge the hole. Then we're going to take our key out, we're going to turn it upside down, and do the same thing. In, rotate, hit it again, and then now we've got a small square hole. But that small square hole is still going to be too small to fit this bypass tool through, so we need to enlarge it. And the way we enlarge it is we use the second part of the tool, which is the hole enlarger. And you can look at the tip. Again, it has a limiter so it doesn't go too deep. Its job is to go down the keyway. Come on, focus. Go down the keyway. The tip of it will fit into that small hole. Again, we're going to strike it. It has a limiter. We're going to enlarge that hole. We may have to do this two or three times. This one only goes in one way. We don't turn this one over. It won't work. So we only turn it one way, knock our hole, then the hole is large enough for our bypass tool to go through. When we knock the hole and we go through that procedure, it'll look something like this. I can get everything kind of lined up here. Come on, focus. There we go. And so when we punch all the holes, you can see it'll knock through that ten thousandths of an inch thick stuff then our bypass tool can fit through there, squeeze through that little hole, and again, he went through the back door, and now he can squeeze through and turn that cam. Okay, that's how it works. Let's find out in the field, does that work? So here we have a brand new lock, it has a brand new wafer, and all we're going to do, let me move this stuff out of the way because this can get quite violent. Uh, it should only take a couple of minutes. We're going to take it first with a point near the top, we're going to slide it in, line it up, and then I like to use a pair of pliers, and you'll see why in a minute, because when we hit it, the limiter will tell you that it's full depth, you can't hit it anymore, and then we need to take our pliers and we, we need to pull this dude out. And we've got to kind of lever it out the first time, because it was stuck in that wafer. Then we're going to do the same thing again, turn it to the right, give it a good whack, And pull it out with my pliers. It's a little easier. Turn them upside down. Same process. And 
and again turn them to the right just like a key to enlarge that hole give ourselves every opportunity for success and by then it should be coming out a little bit easier when it comes out a little bit easier then we go with a larger key to enlarge that hole this may not work because sometimes you got to hit it three or four times but turn it to the pull it out turn it to the right like a key widen that channel up in there and again it's got the depth limiter we so we can't damage the internals on the lock all right I'm going to take a chance now and just say that we got it. Probably screw up the whole video, but anyway, we're going to insert our bypass tool again in the bottom of the keyway. We're just going to slide it in there. And then let me turn this sideways so you can see it. Now what we have to do is work our way, just gently flick it back and forth to find that little hole and to work the tip of that bypass drill to it. And you should hear a little click, and when you do hear the click, then it's like a key. You get a little spring motion on the, the uh, tool itself and then we turn it and bam there we go. So it works. Now there are ways to defeat even the most modern of tools. There are ways to defeat this these bypass tools, these, break, uh, these uh, wafer breakers but uh, this video is already 11 minutes long. I don't want to do it now. We'll cover it in another video to tell you how to take these recycle them, make them much more durable, much more resistant to, to breakthroughs uh, so criminals won't be able to get through these. Anyway, thanks for your time. Stay safe and stay legal.